Okay, I got myself this very cute Pac-Man uh, light. This one. And I think it's it would look really, really nicely here in the background. Something like this, maybe, or on top of the shelf. I don't know. Here, or here, something like that. But, as you might know, I'm on a quest to automate everything in my office. And so, I have to automate that one as well. Now, the thing is, I have only one hour until I have to leave the office. So, that gave me an idea. How about doing the first ever one hour automation challenge? I'm gonna take that one hour that I have left, take that uh, light and uh, connect it to Home Assistant. All of that in one hour, which means I have 20 minutes to figure out the hardware and make it smarter than it is now, because I assume it has some like simple or cheap, Chinese chip, and that's it. Two, to uh, make sure that there is software that's running on whatever chip I choose, and three, automate it with Home Assistant and connect it. So when I use all my presets and lights and all of that, with this remote, I can control that light as well. And bonus points, if I can do cool modes as well, like for example, make it change lights with sound, for example. So let's get some coffee and get the timer starting. Yeah, I'm definitely not <laughs> Peter Buchanan in my making coffee department. But that will have to do. Coffee is made, Pac-Man is ready. Let's start the clock. All right, the Pac-Man is here. Let's see what we have in the box. Ta-da! Nice little Pac-Man and three ghosts. Comes with a micro USB cable. Let's connect it and see how it looks. But first, we need some power. So, 20 minutes to figure out the hardware. Okay. So basically we have LEDs here, we have a button, we have a tiny little PCB in here with a microphone connector. Okay, it doesn't seem to be too complicated. Let's see how do we disassemble that part. I guess it just comes out. I think I broke it. But there's one cable going inside, even though I don't see any lights inside. So we basically have hard-coded hard LEDs here, 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 and here. So I wonder if I'll just use a WS-1281, uh, I think, in here. Will that work? So let's start with a board that we'll use. And I think the board we'll use will be an ESP32 with a WS-1281. Uh, Alright, not what I expected. Let's get that ESP32. So I might need a microphone. So, I have an ESP32 here. By Expressive, if you don't know what it is, it's basically a very uh, small but very really powerful and very really smart microcontroller. I have a microphone model here, which I don't think I will actually need because there is one already in here. But, I don't know, why not try it out? And then I have a LED here. No direct LED. Okay, I think that the first thing I need to do is to uh, unsoldier the existing uh, board and try to figure out what do I do with it. Okay, now that everything is disconnected, let's see if we can even still turn it on and figure out what is going on here. How is the time? Oh no, we have 30 more minutes. Time to move faster with the hardware. Right, so it seems that connecting at the WS2812B should be actually incredibly easy. So here we have plus five volts. Uh, ground and VCC, 
VCC goes to the 5 volts on the ESP. The data in goes to one of the GPIO pins, obviously, or any other of those pins. And then um, ground goes to ground. So let's try this. Oh no. 21 minutes left. I have to get faster. Only 12 minutes left. Only 12 minutes. I don't know what to do. That's not going well. Okay, I'm gonna throw this away. I'm gonna use it for something else. I'm going back to a purple board like this where I can just stick things in and test them. I'm stressed out and the mechanics and stressing does not work that well together. So actually before taking that challenge, I was thinking, should I do a lot of preparation and homework and kind of know what I'm doing or should I just go into it and try to do whatever I can. And the conclusion I came to was I'm just doing whatever I can and learning as we go together with you. And on one hand, it's a lot more stressful. On the other hand, I'm hoping it will make it more entertaining. 45 seconds left, 45 seconds. Ah. Let's see if I can at least Get this working. And we're out of time. Complete failure. But I'll keep on going and we'll see how long will it take me to actually get it working. Um, I connected the hardware. I have no idea if it will actually work, but I guess let's see. Let's use the LED for that. Okay, that's really crazy. So basically it can install it to the uh, ESP32 directly from a website. That's actually the first time ever I've seen that work like that. Every time I see like a website connecting to hardware, I'm kind of blown away. Let's see if that will actually work. That was completely unexpected. I must, I mean, I know yeah, of course it doesn't work. Try listening your device or holding a boot button while clicking install. Ah, I think it actually works. This is crazy. Basically using a website to install firmware to a hardware connected to my USB device. I had no idea that uh, the web today has that kind of level of control over hardware. That's kind of crazy. Okay. And installation complete. Okay, let's see if it actually worked. And that is a shame. So, attempt number two. As expected, controlling microcontroller over a website is a little bit too good to be true, but still a very cool thing. Let's try to see if we can set up the Wi Fi after that. Okay, I have no idea why there is no uh, WLED AP hotspot, like access point, like it says in the documentation. So let's try to restart. So let's flash the bootloader first. That is really getting frustrating. Uh, so far, it's been an hour and a half of my one hour challenge. And. Uh, all the guys I found for flashing WLED onto an ESP32 chip so far did not work. Basically the ESP32 chip doesn't want to connect to my Wi-Fi. Time again. Hallelujah, that actually worked. So. I guess the only way to actually make it work is with the command line tool for some reason, but I flashed the um, bootloader. Now I'm going to flash the firmware itself, like the WLED 
image and let's see if that will actually make the um, access point appeal. Wish me luck. So the bootloader needs to have offset of zero, but the firmware itself needs to have an offset of 10,000. Attempt number 1,500, whatever, 50,000 of flashing the firmware. It's done. What do you think? Does it work? Of course it doesn't. I got another ESP32, a different one. Maybe that one will finally work. I don't believe this. This is finally, finally, see that one? Finally, 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 there's like WLED AP in here. Awesome. Okay. And now it stopped working again. And so after two and a half hours, I give up and I will come back to that tomorrow and try again. This is the next day and uh, I have no idea why my LED strip did not work but we'll find it out together now. <laughs> okay, I'm so stupid, you can't even imagine. I mean, literally it took me two minutes now in a fresh mind to understand. Actually, you know what? Let's see if you can guess. Why did I do so stupid? Look at this here. Do you see the little arrow? That little arrow shows where the input is versus the output where I actually soldiered that LED. I'm so stupid, but Okay, let's see if I'm right. Let's soldier to the other side and see if that works. The soldiering is done. Will it actually work? And it works! Look at this! This is so cool. Look at this. I can do a bunch of different effects. I can even split it into two segments. Oh, that one is cool. So two and a half hours into the whole project. We have a working LED strip connect controlled by WLED on an ESP32. To be fair, it wouldn't take you two and a half hours because I was just stupid and I soldiered the LED strip completely in the wrong place. Tip for life, generally pay attention to the little arrows. Let's put that thing back into the case. Right, I wonder if built-in type in my micro USB connector will just fit in here. It will, but only if I cut the legs of that little ESP32, basically glue and connect that LED strip to that board, because I cannot actually reuse that board too much, I think. I'll use it just as a base. So, let's take the lead strip and cover the whole thing. Okay, here's the idea. First, I'm gonna put that and glue it to here in the middle. And then, I will connect the button, the microphone, and the external USB directly to heal. So let's get the heat gun and glue it all together. Haha. <laughs> okay, and that thing actually works. So we can just put it back into the case and we're basically done. Look at this. And so the hardware is working. The only thing that is not working perfectly is the button here. Now, I can define the various segments and each segment can be a different effect. So this one, for example, is solid. And these three are sprinkling. Let's see, the whole device is sprinkling, sprinkling, I don't know what it does. That is super cool. Okay, now let's see if we can integrate it into Home Assistant. The only thing left is to configure it. I configured it to be WLAN LED Pacman.local. And now I can connect from here. And it just appeared in Home Assistant. So all of that I can add to the main dashboard. And when I want it to be on, I can say the playlist. There you have it. Oh, 
All right, that concludes my first ever one hour build. It didn't take an hour. It actually took four hours, but it was very fun. I think that the time pressure actually made it more exciting for me. I hope you enjoyed watching that. I would love to make more of those in the future. If it's something you would enjoy, please let me know. And now for the standard YouTube ending. If you aren't already, please subscribe, push the like button. If you liked it, leave a comment. If I'm doing something incredibly stupid and I'm doing a bunch of things in that video really stupid, right? Also leave a comment, tell me what I can do better. And please don't fill the comments with, well, look for the arrow on the last tip. Please don't. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.